Beavers are a great piece of the urban wildlife landscape. They can be in an urban environment and do really good work. Having these urban green spaces is huge. My name is Lisa Kerr, and I am the executive director of Beavers Northwest. Hi, little cuties. Magnuson Park is a really interesting place where we are now. Um, it's a big park in the city of Seattle. So they decided to create this series of wetland areas that helps treat stormwater runoff. And so they dug all these channels, made these beautiful wetlands that then drain out to Lake Washington, planted a bunch of beautiful willows and other native species, and then the beavers moved in and were like, wow, thank you so much, this is beautiful. So of course, if you're a landscape architect designing these wetlands, you've got really distinct things that you want them to do, and beavers just totally mess with those plans. Folks are frustrated with beavers with good reason. The big thing that beavers do is they build dams. But we as people tend to build near waterways. We you know, build our homes, we build our roads, we do all kinds of stuff near waterways, including agriculture. And we built these things, these structures, after beavers had been nearly extirpated from this area. Historically, it's estimated that there were upwards of potentially 400 million beavers throughout North America, and then they were trapped extensively for the fur trade. We built all this infrastructure once beavers had already been removed, and now beavers are coming back. You can kind of see the water level is coming up. They've got a dam on this pond that was one of the earliest ones they built. Water level's coming up and getting close to trails and starting to threaten trails, so Seattle Parks was nervous about that. But luckily, they have some really good advocates for wildlife, and they decided to try to live with the beavers where they belong, but also keep those interests of people recreating in this space. Keep your eyes open for a little beef out in the world, little urban beavers. They've just been mowing down these cottonwoods. <laughs> So they've been really active around this area, chewing down some of these trees. And so this is a chewed cottonwood, so you can see where they chewed it and it broke. But the really amazing thing about a lot of this tree species that beavers like to chew is that they re-sprout. So obviously this was a big tree, like some of the ones around us, that then fell and is dead. But it's not quite dead because it's re-sprouting and it's sending up these, you know, 20 new shoots. I think a lot of people panic and say, oh my God, they're killing all of the trees but really they're just changing that vegetation. And so instead of getting these big, tall, beautiful cottonwoods, we get this kind of shrubby, different monster that is really good for songbird habitat. Beavers can continue to come chew this and eat these like fresh new shoots. And so they've just got this sustainable food source that they've created for themselves without having to chew down every single cottonwood in the area. I have way too many pictures on my phone of trees that are re-sprouting <laughs> because I'm like, oh, look at that. <laughs> They're really awkward on land, so they tend to spend as much of their time as possible in water, which is part of why they're trying to create these big ponded areas. It's like, okay, the more access I have, the more perimeter I have to food um, without having to climb out, the better. Primarily by creating these ponded areas, these wetlands, they're creating just more space for water, right? We wanna hold more water on the landscape, especially in the face of climate change where we're experiencing lots of drought. As they're holding that water on the landscape, it pushes more water into the ground, recharges groundwater. It helps to attenuate floods. You know, if we get a big rain event, that beaver wetland can hold on to a lot of water and help prevent floods downstream. Wetlands also have huge abilities to clear up nitrogen and phosphorus levels. And then there's a huge habitat benefit. So wetlands created by beavers tend to have higher biodiversity than uh, systems without beavers. Around here in Washington, we get a lot of our water from our mountains and from the snowpack. You know, we're seeing less and less snow in the mountains, which means less water throughout the year. We, we really depend on that snow melt to come through our systems through the summer and into early fall even. By having beavers on the landscape, they have the ability to potentially hold on to some of that water for us. Certainly there's no way that beavers can replace our loss of snowpack, but they can help hold on to a portion of it and help us mitigate a little bit of that loss. Okay, so water levels are low. Essentially, this is a drain. It really allows water to continue moving. We can set the level of where we want that water to be with the pipe, but it's really a compromise. We want to help the people and make sure their infrastructure isn't flooding, but also keep the beavers around because of all these benefits we've talked about. We're not doing this because beavers are cute and fuzzy. We're doing it because they have all these benefits for people and fish and other wildlife. If you've got beavers in your area and they have decided, wow, this is really good beaver habitat, they will be back. And so 
finding ways to manage them where they're at, learn to live with beavers, um, is really what we're all about. Fish and beaver dams go hand in hand. Um, there's all these kind of benefits beyond just creating this awesome wetland that beavers do um, that benefit fish. A lot of parts of America, people have been realizing the values of a value of having beaver on the landscape. People have been going out and mimicking them by building these structures called beaver dam analogs, such that you, you know, these intertwined slash creates a semi-permeable ephemeral dam, a lot like a beaver dam, that still holds back water um, to kind of recharge the aquifer, keep water in the stream for longer, but also create you know more volume of habitat for fish. Here we have 14 dams. We're trying to assess the effect to temperature and habitat, but also just the general fish population response. Do we see an increase in fish population because of this increase in habitat. A lot of people say that beaver taught salmon how to jump. They were, you know, they've existed together naturally, so you'd think they wouldn't be a problem. But again, as we have these effects of climate change, invasive species, land use, um, you know, we're not living under that same paradigm anymore. And so as managers and stewards of the land, we need to be, have a better understanding about these different factors that um, create a stream. And so. Beaver dam analogs might be doing more harm than good in a place like the Intermountain West where those effects of climate change are, are a little more accelerated and protracted than say the Pacific Northwest where um, they're in lower lands and have you know, more fish and things like steelhead and salmon that are able to go to the sea whereas our trout stay here and are affected severely by things like warmer temperatures and invasive species. That's kind of what science is about, is kind of pulling in all these perspectives and contexts and replicating experiments you know, across the landscape so that we can get, make better generalities um, than just from one, one place. The restoration's truly gonna be ephemeral. It's gonna, they're gonna blow out in the high water year, the wood's gonna rot, and so ideally you put it in a place that you know, you can put these beaver dam analogs in, they'll help recharge that aquifer, recharge the floodplain in such a way that you start recruiting more willows downstream, more beaver food, um, and then maybe some beavers will come in and become the restoration specialists themselves. And so we won't have to keep coming out here and fixing these dams.